Hi guys, it is Aoife from Words of Clover and I am here to do my second part of my December wrap up. I will leave the first part of my December wrap up um, linked up above and as I said in that one, I had a really great reading month in December. December and March were my best reading months of the year um, in 2020 and yeah, it was really nice just to be able to read so many books in December and really feel like I got my reading mojo back. So the first book I want to talk about in this wrap up is actually one that should have been in my previous wrap up because I completely forgot to talk about it. I just skipped over for some reason when I was looking at my list and that was The Vanishing Half by Brooke Bennett. This is a buddy read I did with Aoife over at Pretty Purple Polka Dots who, I'll who I will leave linked down below and it was really great reading this with her and kind of discussing our thoughts and feelings with the book and it's definitely a book that makes you think a lot and particularly makes you think a lot about racism and colorism. And I did really, really enjoy this book. This is a book that's had a good bit of hype on Booktube, but if you haven't heard about it, it is about, we follow kind of, we start following the story with these twin sisters. And the two of them live in this town called Mallard, which is a town where it's mostly populated or is, I think, purely populated by people of colour. But the people of colour in this town are very, very light skinned and they kind of cherish light skin and stigma that's put upon people in this town that have darker skin because light skinned is like this ideal that they want. And we are following these twin girls who are both very light skinned and we are following them as they grow up in this town and when they are about in teenagers they run away and then they completely separate with one of the twins eventually marrying a dark skinned man and having a very dark skinned child and then she returns to the town with this dark skinned child who does end up having quite a hard time growing up in this town because of her um the, the color of her skin and then we also follow the um other twin which who ends up living her life passing as a white woman who marries a white man and has a um, seemingly white child and lives a very very different life but a life full of secrets and full of I guess in a way um anxiety that she's always going to be caught out and you know her secrets going to be revealed. We kind of follow the sisters but then we also follow their daughters and some other people in their life throughout the years. It spans a number of years and I really enjoyed this. I was kind of worried at, at first about the kind of the big the, 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 the gaps between the years because I'm kind of someone I love to know everything about a character I love everything to know everything what they're doing I sometimes love to know like what they have for breakfast so I was kind of worried that I would mi feel like I was missing things and I actually kind of got used to the gaps um to the, to the time jumps and I think it worked really well in this instance I did really enjoy this book overall as I said it was one that just really makes you think about um but racism and colorism and uh how people of color can grow up like feeling the, the stigma around dark skin and how you know just how sad that is and how problematic it is and how you know we still need to tackle those things as well in society four out of five stars really enjoyed and i really recommend the next book i read i absolutely loved and that was the bear and the nightingale by Catherine arden this is one that i knew i was gonna love i put it on my five star predictions for 2020 and no surprise to anyone i absolutely loved it this is basically we are following a girl who grows up in russia we're it's kind of like a historical fantasy novel and um, this girl grows up in in Russia and she has this kind of touch of magic to her where she's able to see these kind of old Russian creatures that live in the household and the surrounding forest um, where she lives and there's like a tradition that people like leave out like little bits of food and things for these creatures and then in turn these creatures look after the house and keep people from danger and illness and things like that but then we kind of see the encroaching danger of like new religion and christianity and the belief that these type of creatures are demons and we see this little girl called vasia struggle with the idea that someone comes in her new stepmother comes in who's very um devout and can also see these creatures but thinks that they're demons and there's this struggle between kind of the new gods and the old gods and the danger of forgetting the old gods and then how how this behaviour then can negatively affect the rest of the household and the rest of the village. I just absolutely love this. There was everything that I wanted in this book. The style of writing was absolutely gorgeous. I love reading about particularly historical Russia. I just absolutely love it. It's just something that I really, really enjoy. I always have. Um, the little bits of magic in this book, um, some of it's quite subtle, some of it's in your face, but it's just so lovely. I love reading with these little creatures that kind of reminded me in a little way of how Irish people used to um, uh, th think about fairies and how they used to kind of fear but respect fairies. And it, it's definitely similar um, 
the way these creatures used to be looked after by Russian people and I definitely saw the similarities there and I really enjoyed that. I just really loved how this all ended up. I loved kind of following the characters. People do say there's a bit of a slow bit in the middle and I do agree with that but again I just was enjoying the characters so much I just loved spending as much time with them as possible. I did really like how this book ended up and it kind of ended kind of in like almost like a neat little bow so I'm really um, interested to see what the next two books bring. So I gave this a five out of five stars, really loved it and yeah I'm really happy I read it. Unfortunately the next book for me I really really did enjoy and I've really struggled with it and this was Fragile Monsters by Catherine Manon. This is a book I previously mentioned in my Christmas vlog and um, my bumper Christmas vlog that I did and I did mention that I was really struggling with it and I didn't know whether I was going to DNF it. I ended up pushing through and to be honest I probably could have DNF'd it because I didn't really you didn't really get the answers that you wanted with this book. In this book we are following, it's set in Malaysia, and we are following a girl called Durga who has returned home from a time in Canada to um, Malaysia and she's living with her grandmother. And basically the night of Diwali, something happens and it sparks this like, not really a series of events, but it sparks her grandmother saying something that sparks Durga's interest in what really happened to her mother because she never knew her mother. Her mother died um, when she was a newborn. And she realises that there might be some kind of secrets around her mother. And Durga also has kind of things that have kind of cropped up from her own childhood that she's kind of struggling to think about while she is in her childhood home. And some relationships that are kind of unresolved as well kind of come back to kind of not hurt her but kind of come back to annoy her in a way. This book just felt really jumbled and I just wasn't really sure exactly what the author was trying to get at. Um, I feel like... The way they, I don't, I, like I, I have a really hard time figuring out what I didn't like about this book because it was kind of a combination of everything and there are some people who really love this book, like on Goodreads, it has like loads of five star reviews and I just don't know what it was that I didn't get and it's kind of one of those ones where I just don't understand those five star reviews and I just, I really liked learning about Malaysia and particularly, um, Durga's grandmother's childhood growing up in Malaysia. There were just bits of this book that made me feel a bit icky. I didn't really enjoy it and I just, it's one that I have a very hard time explaining. I'm really sorry, but I just really, really didn't enjoy this book. It didn't give me any of the answers that I wanted. Um, there were some things that Durga focused on that actually didn't mean anything in the end. And to be honest, it was just a massive waste of time for me reading. It was one when I put down, I really didn't want to pick it up. I really had to struggle to pick it up. And it's one that I probably should have DNF'd, um, but I just have a really hard time DNFing books. So, I really didn't like this one and I gave it a 1 out of 5 stars. The next book was thankfully much better and that was The Twelve Dates of Christmas by Jenny Bayliss and this is a really cute Christmas contemporary novel which is set in this little town where this girl is um, this woman, she's 34 years old and she has been single for a while, she's had a few dates but she hasn't had a long term relationship in about 4 or 5 years and her, she lets her friends convince her to sign up for this thing called The Twelve Dates of Christmas where for the month of December she is um, Basically, she's matched up with different these different men for these 12 different types of Christmassy dates. And this is just, this was just so much fun. I really love the whole concept of the 12 dates of Christmas. I really feel if you could do something like this and do it safely and do it in a, like a good way, like you would rake it in. Like the dates in this were absolutely amazing. I would love to go on these type of dates. Like there was, um... There was like salsa dancing, there was an escape room, which I wouldn't like on a first date because I hate escape rooms. I just hate that type of pressure on me to be clever. I can't deal with that. There was a gingerbread house making competition, which had scenes that just really made me laugh, were so funny. Um, and then there was like ice skating and things like that. There were just so many great things in this book. And the character herself, Kate, is absolutely lovely. She's a character that you just really, really love and you're really root for as well. The best thing about this book for me was the village and was the location because the village felt so, so real. The way Jenny Bayliss created this village and created the, the inhabitants of this village, Kate's neighbours and friends and family, they all felt so, so real and they all had their own stories and backgrounds and connections with each other and the way it was explained it never felt like overkill, it felt like we were getting this really clear picture of this place. There was just so much loveliness and joy in this book that I really, really enjoyed. I will say it was very, very, very obvious what was going to happen, what was going to happen from the very, very start. And it did take me a while to warm up to that because I didn't want that to happen. But eventually it, it won me over and I was happy near the end of it. So I did really enjoy this and I gave this a really strong like 4.5, 5 stars. And I really enjoyed it and I really recommend it as a Christmas read. 
it was absolutely brilliant. The next book I read was also a Christmassy read and that was Snowflakes at Mistletoe Cottage by Katie Ginger. In this one we are following a character who basically has the worst day ever when she is fired from her job and also dumped by her long-term boyfriend in one day and then she ends up having to go home to her childhood village where she rents out this kind of really old cottage and she's trying to figure out what the hell to do with her life and she decides to try and become a food blogger slash vlogger and we are kind of following her adventures with that while also she is having some kind of romantic feelings for um, an old school friend of hers that's in the village who's also suffering a lot from a past relationship and he's definitely suffering from um, like a mild to severe form of depression. I really enjoyed this it was cute and it was fun and the characters were all lovely there were some bits that were a little bit unbelievable about like how stupid and how terrible her ex-boyfriend turned like when they broke up and you know he was almost so cruel in a way that it felt unbelievable and then he was so stupid in a way that it also felt unbelievable and that situation wasn't you know as I said the most believable but you know it went well with the story I guess and sometimes you like those over the top things can be quite entertaining. I really like the vlogging aspect of this because obviously most people who follow me here or myself and all the other booktubers we know what it's like to sit down in front of a camera and have to figure it all out particularly as just an amateur like doing what you love and it was definitely fun kind of seeing her deal with that and figure out the ups and downs of YouTube life and blogging and you know mean comments and you know constructive criticism and things like that and lighting and you know not being too booby on camera like all those kind of things that like you do kind of have to deal with and it was just really interesting and fun. I will say for me, one of the things I didn't particularly like about this book was the fact that it did feel a little bit like that trope of the character Joe, who I said was suffering from depression. He does talk a little bit about counsellors and trying to go to a counsellor and it not really working out for him. And then it kind of feels like his depression is almost magically cured when he um, ends up with Esme, who is the main character. And, you know, as he starts to develop feelings for her, where it's very obvious that what he's feeling isn't just it's something that he needs to go to a therapist and he needs to or, or a counsellor and he needs to talk about and you know it's not just magically cured because he met the right person a little bit of, it's not like really you know oh i'm cured i'm cured forever but there's definitely no follow through of him really properly seeing a counsellor or anything like that so there was that bit in it but overall I really enjoyed this one it was a nice Christmassy read gave me all the good fuzzy feelings so I gave it a four out of five stars then I read a booktube favorite and that was Nevermore the Trials of Marvin Crow by Jessica Townsend this was sent to me for my birthday by Victoria over what Victoria read and I loved this book this was so much fun I started reading this on Christmas day and I read it over the Christmas period while I was at home with my family and it was just so so lovely I really enjoyed reading it um, I was talking to my dad about it and he is going to I think he really wants to try and pick it up as well. So if you haven't heard about this book, um, this book's kind of been everywhere on booktube and the the second and third books have also been out as well this year. A lot of people have been reading them but this we are following a girl called Morgan Crow who is uh, her whole life she knows she has been cursed um, because of the day that she was born and she knows that when this particular uh, day called Eventide comes she is destined to die. Um, and when this day does come, she ends up getting whisked away by this man called Jupiter North. She's brought to a place called Nevermore, which is this kind of magical like land that she never knew about before. And she ends up going into these trials for um, to become a member of the Wondrous Society. And she has to do these different types of trials while also trying to figure out if she has this kind of magical ability that could mean that she has a really good shot at becoming a member of this wondrous society and she could stay in Nevermore forever which is kind of what she wants because her life is practically in danger if she was to ever leave Nevermore. This book is just it was just so much fun and so lovely and definitely those feelings of magic and wonder and found family and friendship and there was lots of funny moments and lovely moments and it just gave me all the smiles that I wanted and all the lovely feelings that you want especially over Christmas time and um, this book is kind of spans about almost like a year so you go through a lot of the different seasons including Christmas and Halloween and things like that which were which were a lot of fun. I absolutely just love this one and I cannot wait to read the second and third books which I will be definitely buying um, this year with my book vouchers that I got for Christmas so yeah I will be really looking forward to continuing with the series and I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. And then the second last book I read uh, in December and the second last book I read this year absolutely 
I absolutely loved it. Um, I raved about it on Instagram. I don't know if people saw it, but it is called uh, Together by Christmas by Karen Swan. And I said before my Chris era, my winter TBR, I've read a couple of Karen Swan books over the last few years. She always brings one out around Christmas time. And this one, I actually think it's a little bit misleading that both the the title of it and the cover of it is a little bit misleading because it looks like this cute fluffy Christmas romance and it is that but it's also so much more and it's a lot more serious than you would actually think going into it and I just thought this book was phenomenal I just absolutely loved this book so so much this book we are following a character called Lee who used to be a war photographer and at the very start of the book we see these flashbacks to her in Syria with her um colleague and a uh, partner who was a journalist so she would be the photographer and he would be the journalist and they would go out and get these amazing stories together in these war zones and we follow them in Syria and then we flash forward I think it's about seven years and she is a, um, a very well-known photographer now in Amsterdam and she's living in Amsterdam and she is raising her son who's about five years old um, in Amsterdam and we know that she doesn't talk to um, Harry who was her previous um partner before she doesn't talk to him anymore something happened all those years ago in Syria that she they just completely cut contact she just doesn't want anything to do with him and she still seems to be struggling with that a bit it's definitely something that like lies heavy on her and we also see that she's definitely struggling from things like PTSD and anxiety over the things that she saw as a war photographer and she's also just trying to be the best single mom she can be to her little boy and while she's kind of dealing with all of this, she ends up meeting this man called Sam, who is the first person in a really, really long time that she feels a really genuine connection with. So I just really enjoy this book. I just could not put it down. It was really, really hard for me to actually like switch off my Kindle and go to sleep the night that I started reading this. I just, and then the next day I kept, I was going like to try and do other things and I kept like, st like stopping those things like, before they were finished so I could sit down and read this book. I just could not stop reading it. It was just so good, so compelling. Lee herself is a character. She's a little bit prickly in a way, but you can kind of understand why she is like that. And some of her mannerisms and the things, how she reacts to things and how she deals with life following her years um, in war zones as a photographer. And it was really interesting. There was also some really lovely Dutch traditions, Christmas traditions in this book that I really enjoyed learning about. Some of which I knew a little bit about already because of the Dutch booktubers that I follow. But there are some really interesting things. There was this one thing called, um, oh, I, I can't pronounce it, but it's basically like this big ice skating competition um, that happens like when the ice is a particular temperature or a particular depth in the Netherlands. And um, it hasn't happened since 1997, but obviously for the purpose of this book, it does happen um, in this book um, for the first time since 1997. And they were just really interesting to read about. And then just reading about her, her background and the things she's dealing with was just, it was just so good. As he said, winter Christmas, and there's some Christmas bits in it, but I wouldn't say that this is a Christmassy book. This is a book you could read any time of the year. Um, it's not super duper focused on Christmas time. It just happens to be set at Christmas. But I absolutely love this book. I gave it a five out of five stars, an easy five out of five stars, and I absolutely loved it. And I will say, a side note, I normally hate children in books. I just find the authors try and make them too cute and too over the top as kids, if you know what I mean. And it just really annoys me. The little boy in this, Jasper, was what probably one of my favourite children in books ever. He was absolutely adorable, so cute. I loved him so much. Um, yeah, so that also was like a plus for me for this book. But this is definitely Karen Swan's strongest book in the last few years that I have read. It could be her strongest book ever, I don't know. But it was absolutely brilliant. I loved it. Cannot recommend this book enough. Really, really good. Five out of five stars. And then the last book I read in 2020 was a, um, a little middle grade book called Horse Boy by Tanya by Tanya Landman and this is just a very short novel about a little boy who grow he's growing up in this kind of prehistoric caveman type um area and he basically gets separated from his family on this hunting trip and he ends up having to he ends up having to kind of make a connection with this horse that he's also stuck with 
and they'd never known about horses before they just kind of had saw them as animals that they could hunt and eat where now he is seeing the benefits of maybe having a connection or a relationship with this horse and the things that this horse could do for him and he could do for this horse and there's this lovely kind of relationship that forms between the two of them as the two of them try to get home to their uh, prospective families. This was fine, there was nothing really like absolutely magical or special about this book. I enjoyed it for when I was reading it but I wouldn't say it's absolutely amazing. I'm sure a little boy or a little girl, particularly little boys or little girls who love horses might really love this book as is one that I would actually, you know, I'm sure a lot of boys would really enjoy it as well because of like the hunting caveman aspect of it. There is like a, a masculine aspect to this book that I think would um boys would like if they were looking for that kind of thing. Yeah, this is fine. I gave it three out of five stars. I enjoyed it, but it wasn't absolutely amazing. So that is everything I read in the last part of December. This was a really long wrap up. I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, I read loads of books in December and a lot of really good books too. Thank you guys so much for watching and for all your support over the past year. It's been really, really appreciated. I love all your comments and your views and your likes and I love chatting about books as you guys know. So thank you guys so much and I hope you guys stick around um, over the next next year as well um, because I have lots of exciting videos planned and lots of books to read and I can't wait to share it all with, share it all with you. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.